This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. As we look at the aftermath of one of Cuba's worst environmental disasters in decades and the largest oil fire in its history, last month, a fire at an oil storage facility in the western province of Matanzas began after lightning struck part of the oil depot. One person killed, some 120 injured. The blaze worsened electricity outages on the island, which relies heavily on imported foreign oil to generate electricity, already facing an energy crisis due to soaring global food costs. For more, we continue with Code Pink's Medea Benjamin, who's been following this closely, spent many uh, uh, visits to Cuba. You tweeted, it's infuriating that Biden administration sanctions on Cuba make it difficult for Cuba to effectively respond to the recent tragic fire. Tell Biden to take Cuba off the list of state sponsors of terrorism, unquote. Can you lay out what's happened since this fire, the largest in Cuba's history? Yes, uh, it's very difficult for groups like us in the United States that want to help Cuba and have been raising money uh, to send the goods to Cuba, because the banks in the U.S. Uh, won't deal with funds uh, destined for Cuba. Companies don't want to sell if you tell them that the destination is Cuba. Uh, we have to go around a lot of uh, um, uh, um, issues that the U.S. puts in the path, and that is because Cuba is on the state sponsor uh, of terrorism list, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it was put on that list because Cuba had hosted uh, rebels from Colombia for peace talks. Uh, those peace talks are resuming now with the new government of Colombia uh, that has said Cuba should be off of that list. Uh, Cuba, if anything, is a state sponsor of global health care, sending doctors and nurses around the world, uh, not a state sponsor of terrorism. And so we have a campaign we would love people to join on the Code Pink website uh, to push Congress and Biden to take Cuba off that list so that we can help Cuba in times like this uh, to get the medicines, to help the burn victims, to uh, reinvigorate uh, the economy, especially in Matanzas, where people are really suffering as a result of this fire. Well, Medea Benjamin, I wanted to now move on to Saudi Arabia. You're the author of a number of books, including Kingdom of the Unjust, behind the U.S.-Saudi connection. I want to ask you about uh, the Saudi women's rights defender Salma al-Shahab, who's been sentenced to 34 years in prison over her advocacy. It's reportedly the longest sentence ever given to a Saudi women's rights activist. She was initially sentenced to a six-year prison term over tweets she posted critical of Saudi Arabia's treatment of women, but an appeals court last week increased the sentence to 34 years behind bars and banned al-Shahab from leaving the kingdom for another 34 years. Human rights advocates are warning of worsening conditions for Saudi women, as Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman intensifies his crackdown on dissent and strengthens his relationship with the Biden administration. This is a barbaric sentence of a woman who's a Ph.D. student in uh, Leeds. She was going to Saudi Arabia to visit family uh, and was detained there for her tweets. She had 2,000 followers. That was the extent uh, of her Twitter supporters, and 159 followers on Instagram. Uh, this woman uh, should not be in prison, and this draconian sentence is just in, uh, uh, unconscionable. And it shows that MBS is no reformer. It shows that the United States uh, should not be selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. Uh, the crackdown on women continues. And I, I think this is a, uh, a, a, a something that we should all be pushing the Biden administration to uh, a, demand her release and to stop uh, cozying up to the dictator MBS in Saudi Arabia. Medea Benjamin, you are co-founder of Code Pink. In our next segment, we'll be talking about the Inflation Reduction Act, shaped by Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona, once participated in a Code Pink protest. And I wanted to get your response to this. The Associated Press reported this week on how Sinema, quote, single-handedly thwarted her party's longtime goal of raising taxes on wealthy investors, received nearly a million dollars over the past year from private equity 
equity professionals, hedge fund managers and venture capitalists whose taxes would have increased under the new bill. Uh, the AP reports Cinema forced a series of changes to the IRA, including cutting a proposed carried interest tax increase on private equity earnings while, quote, securing a $35 billion exemption that'll spare much of the industry from a separate tax increase other huge corporations now have to pay. Um, now, you have a connection to her, because Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona once joined in Code Pink protests, including against um, Israel and APAC. Your thoughts on her now? Well, we don't know what happened, how uh, Kristen Cinema has been possessed from being a one-time anti-war activist uh, to being uh, such an obstacle for any progress in the United States. Uh, we have watched her uh, in horror and tried to protest her along the way. And um, now that we see that she is a supporter of every increase in the Pentagon budget, uh, the uh, enormous increases that are now coming out of the Biden administration uh, and increased more in the House and then increased more in the Senate when you have people like Kristen Sinema, uh, who disregards the real needs of people uh, that are her constituents and instead uh, promotes the interests of big corporations, including the weapons industries. Mm. And finally, the military budget that President Biden has released for 2023, $773 billion. The total military budget reportedly exceeds $800 billion. Your response? We just talked about Afghanistan, and the U.S. wound down this war a year ago. You would think there would be a, quote, peace dividend in which the Pentagon budget would go down. Instead, it's increased uh, over $100 billion from during the Trump time, and now the House has put another $37 billion on top of what Biden asked for, and the Senate will add more to that. Uh, it just shows how we have to build a stronger, more effective uh, peace movement together with environmentalists, people working for uh, a good health care system, an end to the student debt. All of us have to come together to say uh, this money should be taken out of the Pentagon budget and put into the real needs of people and the climate. Medea Benjamin, we want to thank you for being with us, co-founder of Code Pink and Unfreezing Afghanistan. This is Democracy Now!, as we talk about President Biden signing into law the sweeping $739 billion Inflation Reduction Act. Back in a minute.